Most teaching and learning still takes place in rectangular boxes, classrooms, and the physical environment of the school classroom can have quite a marked effect on pupils' learning. Serried ranks of desks are still very common, but desks arranged in pods around the room are increasingly used. Other physical factors such as high ceilings and daylight and fresh air pumped around a school can also influence learners' comfort and concentration levels. Some teachers have used music in the classroom to enhance their pupils' learning, but how effective is music in producing a better learning environment? To find out, we've set up an experiment to test whether music played in the background during a lesson boosts attentiveness. We've brought together a musician who composes music to be played in classrooms and a psychologist. They've teamed up with a science teacher at Mosley School in Birmingham to test the theory out. Music doesn't necessarily make you more intelligent, but it can give you the right sort of focused atmosphere where you're calm, you're relaxed, it reduces your blood pressure, it reduces your heartbeat. It also has an effect on the alpha brain waves, which are important for um, being relaxed and calm, but also being alert. So you're in quite a sort of creative state where you should be very focused for learning. Bo Fletcher's been a working musician for 30 years and is something of a virtuoso on the guitar. Recently, Vo's been involved in creating music specifically designed to create a better mood for learning in schools. But his music is specifically designed not to be listened to. The important thing is that when I'm playing with the guitar, it shouldn't get in the way of the feel of the music and the tempo of the music. So when I come to mix this, this guitar will be quite low in the mix. It'll be quite submerged. Subtlety is the key of the day. Mosley Comprehensive School in Birmingham, where our musical experiment is taking place. They're going to take a one-hour lesson and divide it into two 30-minute tasks. One task will be carried out under normal conditions. During the second task, Vo's background music will be playing. The behaviour of the pupils will be observed with and without the music, but the pupils think it's going to be just a normal science class. What I'd like to do today is recap some words to his sound. Teacher John Crawshaw set a simple revision exercise built around the way that sound can be measured and described. Pupils will be expected to work both individually and in small groups during the lesson. There's a word and there's a meaning. What's the one that should go with the machine that shows what a wave looks like? Jamal? CRO. CRO. What you're going to do is work together to build these up into a big long chain. Dr Penny Upton will be looking for the subtle changes in behaviour and attentiveness that indicate to her whether learning is being enhanced by the presence of music. But for the first 30 minutes of the lesson, no music will be played. If you look at them at the moment, they're um, very fidgety. There's a lot of foot jiggling going on, playing with pens and pencils, poking each other. If you look at the boys, typical sort of behaviour that you'd see in a classroom. I think they're about normal, I'd say. I think they're, they're quite a good class. They generally work well, and I think they're working well today. Even without the music, the girls seem to be working well. The girls are quite well focused, they're paying attention to the task, they're playing the game that they've been asked to play. But some of the boys are just chatting, they haven't even started the task set. If you look at the young lad over there, his concentration is clearly not on the lesson at all. He spins in his pen, he's nudging his partner, his foot's jiggling almost all the time. So, yeah, he's paying attention, but not completely. The concentration's not entirely there on the lesson. In a second, you're going to play a game called dominoes. You're going to have some, you're going to have some, you're going to have some. And nine spares. A key task set was to work as individuals in a game of dominoes against the other members of their group. 30 minutes into the lesson, the background music is started. It'll be very quiet, but loud enough so it can be felt in the room is subliminal. But obviously not so loud that the teacher has to raise his or her voice uh, to communicate to the children.
So have there been any immediate effects? Penny Upton's looking for early signs that pupils' behaviour is changing. For the past few minutes, it's very rare to go those who are quite fidgety and, and disturbed before, but sort of um, calmed down. Their body language has changed. It's almost like the focus has been concentrated. Even some of the girls who were working very well before, they perhaps a slight subtle improvement in what they were doing. Waste energy is often made by vibrations. So how are the lads doing? Have they settled down to the task better now that the music's playing? Our friend who is playing with his pen, he hasn't touched it at all for the past 10 minutes. He's just not interested in it anymore at all. He's far more focused on what they should be doing and completing the task that they've been given. Is there definitely more teamwork? There is, yes. Some of the smaller groups are, um, are forming themselves into bigger groups and yeah. talking about yeah, the, the girls and yeah. the front and the boys. Yeah. Interesting, you know, it's a weird. Well, initially I didn't notice any effects. I thought, to start with, they were just carrying on working at the same level they are. But now they've sort of come to the end of the exercise, but they're still being quite quiet without actually me standing over them and watching them, which is always a bonus. Uh, so at the moment I'm thinking, yeah, it seems a positive thing. Time to reveal to the class what's been going on. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, you came here today, you worked in two halves, you did the same activity in the first half and the second half. Can anyone think what was the difference between the first time and the second time? Music. One activity with no music. The second time you had that lovely little music just playing really quietly in the background. Let's see if you like better with music. That was a test, Harris, that was exactly right. Uh, by putting music on, it alerted us more to the lesson. The music was soothing. It relaxed the mind. I couldn't even hear the music. It calmed us down a bit and there was a nice mood to the music. And I think you're more motivated by listening to music because um, you're doing work and enjoying something at the same time. So generally, a positive impact from the music in the first part of the experiment. For the second part of our investigation of background music with a different group of pupils, we've changed the parameters a bit. The second lesson starts without music as before. Then again, music is going to be played in. But this time it will then be removed for the last 15 minutes of the lesson. In the past, that can have quite a dramatic effect. I've done demonstrations with adults where they've been quite calm, paying attention. The music has been taken away, and they start having side conversations and they pick up some water and pick up tea. Right, so we've got potassium, hydroxide, and remember that's It's a chemistry lesson and a room full of lads for John Crawshaw to deal with. Look this way, look this way. The teacher's demeanour has changed. He's obviously anticipating the class being a lot livelier and noisier than previously, so he's already shushing them a lot and trying to calm them down. The other thing is when he asks questions, rather than seeing lots of hands shooting to give answers as we saw with the first class, there's a lot of calling out. A lot noisier than last time. The tasks set are similar to the first lesson. Collaborative working is going to be needed. Pick one up, put it down, and then see if you can join one onto either end. As the lesson gets underway, some groups get straight on task. Again, no music is playing for the first 20 minutes or so. One group seems a little distracted, and this group seemed to have an odd man out. One member is clearly not engaging with the other two. Okay, well, time to put the music on. Let's see how they get on. The room immediately feels like a more pleasant place to be in. And of course, that's, that's as important for the teacher as it is for children. Because obviously, what, what I'd like is for the teachers to be enjoying their job way more than they, for some of them, currently are. Well, I think, again, he sees a little bit more calmness. Um, but what's interesting as well is to look at the interactions that are going on. Um, the young group we were talking about before, there's a little bit more inclusion going on now. They seem to be communicating between the three of them rather than just in a two. So, and the person who wasn't engaged, his body language has changed. He's leaning more into the group rather than out of the group. So clearly, he's become more engaged in the task than what they're supposed to be doing.
With the music now playing, curiously, the level of chatter in the room seems to have gone up. What you'll find is there's a lot of chat going on, perhaps even more than before, but it's what it's focused on that matters. They're having a good time, they're laughing, they're joking, but it's all on task. Now teacher John seems noticeably calmer. His voice is lowered and there's some hands going up to answer his question. How many elements are there? Oh. Actually, I do feel quite relaxed, yeah. I think it is quite nice music. It's, it's not there, it's not in your face all the time, but it is pleasant. It does seem to be set up a nice atmosphere. Time to take the music away again. What's going to happen now? Listen to it now, the noise level is starting to go up gradually. There's more shouting, sir. Chairs start to scrape a little bit there as well. What's interesting is the boys at the front. There's a lot more looking around the classroom. There's also a little bit, a little bit of physical altercation going on, a little bit of pushing and, and shoving, which is quite interesting because it looks as if gradually they are starting to move off task. We've been getting up and walking around a lot more, a lot more shouting out about things as well. And John's having to impose himself a little more. Even our teacher's more yeah. agitated. Can you put those cards back in there, please? Thank you for your time today. With the experiment finished, what's the verdict from the teacher? Did the music help? I thought it was very interesting. I thought it did seem to have a calming effect on the pupils especially the second group. When that came on, I thought they were more quiet. What might be interesting is varying some of the conditions in the classroom, so try and play the music at different times, different sort of um, levels uh, as well, and with different classroom groups. Yeah. It's be interesting. And what's our psychologist's observation of John the teacher? We did notice that when we turned the music off that um, he was a lot a lot less calm. Again, we saw that sort of uh, physical movement, tapping of fingers, a little bit more agitation. Um, whether he noticed that himself or not, I don't know. Uh, I didn't know it was visible, but I did feel a bit calmer when it was on. Right. I did. So, is there a new convert to music in the classroom? Yeah, I'd give it a go. I did feel, I felt better myself when it was on. I thought the kids worked better when it was on. Uh, so, yeah, I'd give it a go. Whether background music raises standards of learning is open to debate, but in our experiment it did seem to help teachers and pupils become calmer and more concentrated. Bo Fletcher is certainly convinced of its potential. This is probably the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Because the way I figure it is, if I can help children learn better, then those children will have greater self-esteem. And when they grow up, they'll be better parents, so they'll be finer human beings. And that's, that's my aim, that's my aim.